Good evening, everyone. Um, perhaps we can all take a seat and we can start our donors meeting. Uh, it is an open meeting, so for those who are here like to join us, you can take a seat as well. Okay, good, uh, good evening once again. Um, this is the donors meeting, which is, um, I think, one of the first, if not the first, that we are having such a meeting in the midst of the IGF session is, itself. As uh, most of the donors here will recall, and we've been doing donors meeting um, at, regularly at the MAC meeting. So we had, in fact, we had three uh, this year. But uh, we find that it's also important to, to get donors together during the max section itself. And also, this is the opportunity that the others can join us. I think following the, the IGF process, the, the donors for IGF has also been a transparent uh, process. Uh, we try as much as we can put all the information online, but I think it's still useful to get everybody in the room to, to, to share. So this is um, informal discussion. Um, but still, I'd like to just uh, also invite uh, first uh, our MAC Chair, Lin, um, then Jiu Wang, uh, representing DESA, and also Rudolf, just to uh, say a few words before we actually um, invite our finance colleague, Sonia, that actually give a slight presentation on the, on the figures for this year. So maybe, Lin, you have the floor. I could be really short and say welcome and thank you. <laughs> But that's probably a little too short, even for this, um, for this hour. Um, obviously, your contributions are just incredibly important to all the work we do. You all understand, of course, that the contributions support the trust fund, which supports the secretariat, and um, some developing country travel support, both for MAG meetings and, and here. Um, the host country supports the annual meeting costs, and this year, of course, we were um, very fortunate and very honored to have um, such great support from Germany to um, increase a lot of the, the um, efforts towards developing countries and some of the other efforts with SMEs and parliamentarians. Um, so it's critically important. Um, we've tried over the last few years from um, kind of the MAG standpoint and working with DESA to improve the information around um, our financial situation, which is um, been a real accommodation from DESA's side because in this community, of course, a lot of us just like a lot of data and a lot of information and everything's open, but that's not quite um, kind of the UN style. Um, and a multi-donor trust fund is also somewhat um, rare, as I understand, in the UN circles. So we worked really hard with DESA to put more information up. We continue to do that. We put frequently asked questions up, and we've tried to stand the website up a little bit more so that there was more information available, both in terms of um, who the donors um, have been and, of course, what the contributions support. Um, but again, I'll, I'll just say thank you very, very much. We'll turn it to Zhuang, and then we actually have a presentation on the, on the numbers. Um, we also had a meeting this morning about why the IGF matters a fundraising drive, um, which was part of the formally scheduled program, and we had quite a few people in the room as well. We will, of course, continue those efforts because even with all the great contributions from Germany having um, just donated another million over the next three years, um, and the Netherlands, um, very generous donation a few years ago, which tripled their running rate at the time and committed for five years, um, you know, even with those significant donations, we're still running at less than 50 percent of the budget in the project document. Um, and we'll see the exact numbers. I could be right or wrong because I haven't done um, the full math with respect to rolling in some of the recent contributions. But that, that um, limitation directly impacts the Secretariat's um, staffing level 
and their activities. And of course, that directly impacts what we're able to do with all the good work that happens um, in the IGF. And maybe my final plea is we said this morning in the donors meeting, which if anybody has a contact or an idea of someone we should reach out to, all they need to do, and there's no one better to do it than people who are currently supporting um, the IGF, is to say, I support the IGF for these reasons, whether it's financial or even participation or in kind. Um, and I think you would find it worthwhile to do the same, and I can put you in contact with X. And X should either be the Secretariat or myself or um, some of the desks of folks. We're there to help share any of the other information that's necessary and, of course, to help close the deal when it comes to that as well. So I don't want anybody thinking they have to carry the burden themselves, but the, the first and the hardest is just finding the introduction and making that initial pitch, which is we support it because we think it's important, here's why, and we think you would benefit from that as well. Go talk to X or, or turn the contact over to us. Um, so I will stop there and turn the, the floor to um, Zhuang, Mr. Zhu. He is in uh, Department of Education Sorry, not education, sorry, economic and social <laughs> affairs. Um, um, and of course, uh, DESA is uh, the um, institutional home of the IGF within the UN system. Thank you, Ling. Uh, I want to start by thanking colleagues for staying behind uh, uh, for this uh, very crucial topic for us. And I think I want to probably take colleagues looking forward for the next six years before the IGF is going to be uh, reviewed again by the General Assembly. And I think uh, there are a few things colleagues would probably agree with me and, and elaborate better than I am uh, doing. IGF is a unique place, and there's no other place in the world that can replicate the role of the IGF. Uh, its multi-stakeholderism is recognized by it all, and it's, it's a place where real conversations taking place, and as you probably know this afternoon there are some um, discussions on critical issues on cyber attacks right here in this room and uh, elsewhere on the governance of data, uh, on the sovereignty of this. And these are critical policy issues. And uh, you know, we have uh, colleagues from different countries with different views, but everybody understands that at the end of the discussion, they're closer to understand each other. And the, probably they're willing more willing to uh, try to understand each other with the hope of reaching uh, some agreement. So in a way, IGF here is play, playing a role supporting the United Nations General Assembly. It may not be an institutionalized process. It's something we can look into. But de facto, the discussion <laughs> takes place here is really helping the policy-making process uh, at New York in the General Assembly. And I also want to mention uh, uh, one fact that is often not given enough attention, the growth of national, regional, uh, and youth IGF. It's a tremendous growth, and it's essentially done by one colleague forcing the growth while she's doing everything else. Imagine if we have more resources available, what will be the prospects for the grassroots participation in internet governance. And the third thing I want to raise, which I also highlighted this morning, is that uh, all these discussions, the transcripts, and all this message emerging from the discussion here, they are like excellent raw materials, and raw materials true as they are. And if we do some research and analysis, process them, and turn this uh, multi-stakeholder perspective and views into gems of messages, sharing this message, that will be a tremendous boost, a guidance for policymaking at the national level and probably at the global level, as I mentioned earlier about the GA. But none of this can happen without the resources. Uh, so the question is quite straightforward. If we want an enhanced, strengthened, or you call it the plus IGF, however you describe it, we can do our bits by supporting each other in the fundraising efforts. Because without this, the IGF will remain stunted. However a good job it is doing now, but its potential will never be realized. And we are ready to do our part in the UN. Um, Mr. Liu has met with UN colleagues. 
and we are thinking of setting up a network uh, to support the discussions at the IGF, and we are trying to bring the expertise of UN system together in strengthening capacity building uh, as a part of the strengthened IGF. So, you know, I want to end up echoing uh, Ling's uh, the call that let us work together to make the IGF stronger and better. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Uh, now, I'd like to get Rudolf to just to share a few words from the host country perspective as a, and as well as a donor. Um, thank you very much. Yes. We are host country for two more days, so I will just very briefly um, tell you that we, during the whole year now, since Paris, we have been working very, very intensively and very well together with the DESA, with the IGF Secretariat, um, with colleagues around the world, and it was very clear that um, all the good work that, ha that is done, all the, all the precious input that comes from um, the institutions that um, carry on the IGF work year by year is only possible if there is um, sufficient funding. Um, if, the, if the colleagues um, have uh, a certain um, certainty of planning, if there is a sustainable finance, financial plan, and, um, and that is something which is uh, crucial for a good, for a continued good and valuable work. So it is, it is, um, it is instrumental to have funding because we want the good results to be continued. It is also, I would say, on a very personal basis, um, uh, putting into value um, the work that is being done. It is precious not only for us who are in this room, it is precious a little bit referring to the motto for the world. And um, so uh, that's the reason why we said, okay, we, 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 during our host country ship, we took some money into our hands and put it into the system because we wanted this to be a really inclusive and, and uh, br broadly attended uh, meeting. But um, we, we thought this should not be something that stops here today in Berlin. It should be continued, at least from our side. And, hopefully from others too, so that's why um, our minister pledged $1 million uh, for over the next three years, uh, which will help to continue um, the involvement of uh, the Global South, uh, the parliamentarians, which is something very dear to our heart, and, and also um, a, a certain um, amount is dedicated to the involvement of the IGF and the IGF Secretariat into the new process which is going in parallel, which is the follow-up to the high-level report. Uh, for us, it's very important to have a linkage between these two processes uh, and not to have two, you're talking about these silos, not to uh, create our own silos. So that was also something very dear to our heart. And um, yeah, so uh, that, that's a little bit the rationale behind what, what, what we have been doing and, and, and will be doing. And we will, of course, continue also, if you wish, uh, to contribute in kind over the next years with our expertise that we gained over this year, We're helping out whoever will be um, perhaps uh, host country next year or the year after, and, uh, and also with, I don't know, round tables or, or any other um, uh, measure that we can, that we can uh, put to the, to, to the disposition of this um, esteemed uh, IGF community. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rudolf. So the one next is that we'd like to get Sonia to share with us uh, some slides, perhaps 10 minutes, um, after which we can then have a, a discussion, um, maybe in about half an hour, and we can then break it around uh, 7. So, Sonia. Thank you very much, Paimen. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, Rudolf, for uh, all the opening words. Um, thank you to all of you to, for being here this late and on the, after three days of very intensive discussions. Um, so as usual in the donors meeting, uh, we will see uh, some numbers um, and the presentation of the financial situation. But just before that, I hope you can see, but if you can, uh, it will be published on our website, I understand. But um, Bottom line is uh, 
what we are trying to uh, deliver here is what the IGF project is and what do we uh, refer to when we think about the IGF project uh, and the IGF secretariat. So as some of you probably know, the IGF secretariat is a secretariat that is headquartered in Geneva uh, and it's set up by the Secretary General uh, of the United Nations to help him in carrying out the mandate given to him by RISIS in the early uh, 2000s uh, to convene a forum for the multi-stakeholder policy dialogue. Um, it is an extra budgetary project, uh, so it is completely voluntary funded, as Lynn mentioned earlier. And even though it is set up by the Secretary General of the United Nations, it does not have access to the regular budget funds of the UN. So it fully depends on the voluntary contributions uh, received from its uh, stakeholders. It is set up on a multi-donor basis, which means that all the funds that are received for the IGF secretariat are pooled and then used in carrying out its activities. So um, these activities include capacity building activities such as fellowship programs and uh, grants, intersessional activities that lead into this uh, annual forum, and then travel support to MAG members. Um, from developing uh, countries. And then, of course, all of this would not be possible without the IGF Secretariat staff, so a uh, portion of these pooled funds also goes to fund their salaries who implement uh, all of these activities. Um, currently, the project is in its third phase, which uh, runs through 2025, and this is following the conclusion of phases one and two in 2010 and 2016, respectively. Um, this is just a brief recap of uh, the, uh, or a breakdown of contributions by stakeholder groups. As I said, this is a multi-stakeholder uh, project, uh, and uh, these uh, contributions come from different stakeholder groups. Now, I know it's very, very small, but the big blue chunk um, is the government contributions, and then followed by the technical community, which is represented by the purple chunk, and then the green one is the private sector. So throughout all the phases, um, the structure has been changing, but uh, the one thing that remains unchanged is that the biggest portion um, does come from the government, uh, except for the third phase where uh, there is almost a balance between the technical uh, community and the government. Um, the private sector contributions uh, account for approximately 10 to 15 percent. Um, and then all other stakeholders group, stakeholder groups account uh, for the rest. Um, now on this slide you can see the funding gap uh, that we have. So the green, the upper green line represents the budget, which in uh, the current three years of phase three amounts to approximately $8.6 million. The red line before, uh, below that represents the voluntary contributions that we've received. So the whole area in between is what we don't have to fund the full budget. Um, and then the bottom line that you see, the blue one, is the expenditures, which moves in perfect parallel with the voluntary contributions received, which means that we and they're very close together. So this means that basically all the funds that we have are used for the activities. So we don't really carry a very high fund balance. And we do depend on the voluntary contributions coming in the year. Um, now, this is um, the same graph just breaking down the last four years. So the 2016, when we transitioned from phase two to phase three, and then um, the first three years of the phase three, and you see the same gap uh, between the green line and the red line, uh, whereas in uh, the phase three, in some years, the expenditures even exceeded what we've uh, incurred in that year. That's because we, we did have some remaining balance at the end of each year, which was then used in the subsequent year, but this also means that um, there's going to be less and less left uh, on the side. So again, we do depend on voluntary contributions coming within the year to actually implement the activities of that year. Um, for 2019, uh, we have, as of 12th November, received approximately $840,000. And on that date, there was a, approximately $41,000 expected to be received in a year. This is only the funding towards the IGF Secretariat, uh, not the funding for the Global South received from Germany. Um, so this is what we actually have for the IGF Secretariat uh, activities alone. And 
for from the stakeholder uh, breakdown perspective, this is what it looks like. Again, uh, you see the big purple circle, 64% um, from the government, and then the technical community at 8%, which is the red part. The blue part is the private sector, which um, in 2019 accounted for some 25%, which is a little bit higher than uh, what, what, what the average was in the previous, in the previous years. Um, so, when it comes to the, the expenditures that were incurred in this year, um, I, as of 12th November, we have incurred approximately $750,000 um, of expenditures, which, uh, as you will recall, means that we have some $100,000 left from uh, the voluntary contributions received for uh, 2019. Now, not to get into the details of the figures, I just want to point out the two, uh, the two highlighted lines, which are the grants out. If you look uh, at the first table with a breakdown by uh, the nature of expenditure. Now, these are uh, capacity building activities that we were able to undertake in this year. Um, the $67,000 uh, of expenditures pertains to the grants uh, to NRIs in the amount of $41,000, and um, $26,000 uh, went towards the fellowship programs, which is the on-job training within the IGF Secretariat for uh, people from developing countries. Now, if you look at the second uh, table, uh, the highlighted capacity building line, you'll see that we have spent $105,000 for all the capacity building activities. On top of these grants out, the grants to NRIs and fellows, this also includes uh, the costs of uh, traveling the IGF secretariat staff to uh, NRIs, NRI events around the world, um, and some limited travel of MAG members as well. Um, when it comes to these NRI grants that we were uh, given, we were in the uh, opportunity to give this year, thanks to the contributions that we have received, uh, both to the IGF but also to the Global South participation, uh, we uh, were able to identify nine NRIs, so six national and, uh, sorry, se seven national and two regional initiatives, uh, which were, um, uh, the selection of which was based on the set of pre, uh, predetermined criteria. And the national NRIs got $3,000 each, the regional ones got $10,000 each. Um, and uh, these, these amounts were spent towards different purposes. Uh, the biggest one was the support to travel uh, the participants from remote areas um, or uh, pr promotion materials and outreach. They also uh, were used to secure the logistics of uh, convening a meeting or for the remote participation um, and accessibility. On this map, you can see in the blue and purple uh, the impact uh, of uh, these regional activity, uh, regional uh, grants, uh, we've, uh, because they, they covered the Asia Pacific region and the African region, and then in red, those are the national national uh, IGFs. Um, it is interesting that Chad was one of the national initiatives, but also that's where the meeting was held for the African uh, region as well. We do hope that with the contribution uh, from Germany, but also renewed contributions from existing donors or possibly new contributions, we would be able um, to continue these activities um, in future years as well. Um, I also want to give acknowledgement to Germany uh, for their 2019 contribution in the amount of $650,000, uh, which was used to travel MAG members to the three IGF uh, meetings uh, that were held in the first half of 2019, and then also the significant, it secured a significant support, uh, travel support to, for the for this forum, so travel support to MAG members from developing countries and then participants and parliamentarians uh, from developing countries or the Global South, which is the first time that we were able to do this. Uh, we, as said, we, we hope to continue these activities with this new contribution from Germany uh, of $1 million over the next uh, three years. However, it is important to say 
as much as we are grateful for the German contribution, this does not go towards the IGF secretariat. It has a very specific purpose, so it, it cannot be pooled with the other funds. Having said that, the outlook for 2020 and beyond is such that uh, our budget is between 2.8 and 2.9 million a year. So for the remainder of the phase three, it's 17.3 million. And as of today, we have two pledges that are multi-year. This is the European Commission and the Netherlands, and they account for um, $300,000 over the period of two years. And with the current level of expenditure, we are expected to have approximately half a million dollars left for 2020. And we will, of course, use this uh, for extending the staff contracts and for um, uh, other activities that the staff will be undertaken. But we do encourage additional voluntary contributions, um, and especially the multi-year ones. Now, when it comes to making a contribution towards the IGF Secretariat, um, I do, don't want to bother you with all these steps because it's going to be published and we are happy to answer any questions. But as Lynn said, please just reach out to anyone with, at un.org email address and we will find a way uh, to uh, receive your money. Um, so there, of course, we will, uh, we will guide you through this process uh, with all our information that we have. Uh, and we're willing to take uh, the information that you are bringing from your organizations, but uh, any, any step would be appreciated. Now, when it comes to in-kind contributions, this is a question that we do get often. They can be accepted, uh, and as long as they are aligned with the United Nations uh, rules and regulations, namely the financial rules and regulations, but also other applicable uh, rules and regulations depending on the modality of the contribution, whether it's personnel or some tools or whatever it may be. Um, and if there is such a case, we are willing to consider it. Um, just let us know and it, it will be considered on a case by case basis because of these different modalities. I think that's it from what I had prepared. So thank you in six languages. Um, and if any questions, we are here. Thank you, Sonia. Um, I guess we can drill into some of the charts. I, I realize this is a little small because the room is, is huge. Uh, but as Sonia mentioned, we will definitely put these slides uh, in, on, in the IGF website. Uh, but if you have any questions, of course, we can, we can review uh, one of those slides. Um, so let's um, have the, we can open the floor. Anyone like to, like to, I guess this discussion is more informal or really just to see how we can take the take uh, things forward but if you would like to look at how we have done this year what we could have done better feel free to give us some advice yes Anna. thank you uh, and uh, thank you your colleague um, for uh, presenting uh, the uh, the figures uh, concerning the uh, the budget uh, thanks also to, uh, to Germany for their generous uh, contribution. Um, the Netherlands, uh, as you know, is, is a supporter of, uh, of the IGF, um, and um, we will uh, remain that by, by even trying to uh, continue our sustainable funding. Um, as you know, um, we are discussing also the uh, report on the high-level panel digital cooperation. Uh, there's a s few sentences dealing with um, the funding of the IGF Secretariat, and in our comments uh, from the Netherlands government, uh, we made clear that uh, we missed the, the word sustainable funding, and it's quite important that uh, it should, in our view, uh, if somebody, some organization, some government is, uh, is going to contribute, that should be a, a mid-term uh, period. Uh, can be three years, five years, but at least to 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 to, to give some more uh, stability and uh, predictability to the uh, hard hard and good work of the IGF uh, Secretariat. Furthermore, I think it's uh, it's necessary to spread around the news. Keep doing that every time. Even I think at the at, at the closure of this uh, this wonderful event, uh, there should be some words to the audience still uh, still present. 
uh, to, to, to think about that. Uh, um, stakeholder groups should reach out to their, uh, to their constituencies and see and discuss the, the, the value of this, uh, this IGF and secretariat uh, doing the wonderful job. Uh, if we don't do that, then uh, things will fall down again. Uh, so it's, it's constantly uh, a pressure on all of us to, to do that, to reach out to, uh, to your, your own networks. Uh, we have done a lot of good things uh, within the MAC. Uh, I was a member of the working group on fundraising, and we came up with a, a nice postcard and uh, a, a good letter. I think uh, these kind of little things uh, are very important to, uh, I think, to, to, to see whether there is a, a follow-up uh, to, to these kind of uh, uh, contributions. So. Um, Next year, we, you can receive another 100,000 100, uh, uh, euros from the Netherlands government. And uh, at least wherever I go and speak to people, I always raise this point of, uh, of funding because uh, without a strong secretariat, uh, the organization cannot uh, um, continue to, 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 the, the, to do their job. So uh, this is uh, our view and my reaction to your statement and presentation. Thank you. Thank you, and I, I think uh, your, your, your advocacy strong push uh, for Netherlands, and that is, uh, remains as one of the two multi-donors to the main trust fund, I, I think is, is, is certainly the commitment. Um, is at your personal level and also your government, of course, but I think we, we hope that more can really follow the, the, the footsteps of uh, being committed as a multi-year donor. So thank you for that. We, we, are, we, are, we are trying to do more. Uh, we, we did have this, uh, this little brochure here following the, the good lead that you did last year. Uh, so, but I guess it's still a learning process. We have, to, we have to do much more to get this involved. One small addition. Of course, I mentioned that, that we are discussing the, uh, the content of this uh, high-level report. Um, <coughs> You've noticed uh, there are three, three possible options uh, to, to increase, the, the, to strengthen the IG, IGF, um, and one of them is IGF Plus, with an incubator and accelerator, uh, what have you. Uh, it's, for us, it's still unclear what it really means and what the, 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 the future structure uh, will be. And that, of course, is very important to know as well. Uh, will, it, will, it, will it end up with more resources, more, more people, uh, another, another structure than we, we already know? Uh, this we have to take into account as well, I think. Uh, but until uh, 2025, I think we, uh, we will do our best to, uh, to continue our uh, funding to the IGF as, it's, as it stands now. Thanks. Thank you, Annette. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, um, I mean, on the subject of the of the leaflets, I, I, I don't know if you have distributed them among the governments that were here on Monday and Tuesday. That would have been really helpful because uh, then, uh, and all the, all the participants, if they haven't been, you know, next to the next IGF in Poland, I'm sure that the Polish government will probably do something similar with uh, uh, a lot of high level participation. And these are the people who need to get it and they should be addressed uh, to, to do it because um, uh, they are the ones who can take a decision to support it. Also, uh, it may be good to reach out to some of the current uh, supporters to see whether they could contribute more. Maybe they could if they are being asked. Um, so, so that's only two things, you know, that I can think of at the moment. But um, this, this is definitely going to work, and I can uh, ask my colleagues here, who have, who have, if, if you guys want, there are some, like probably 20, 30 of those leaflets here, so you can come and pick up on the way out if you want to distribute some of them <coughs> to participants in the IGF now. Thank you. Thank you, Benny. Rudolph. Yes. Yeah. Rudolph, please. Yes, Vinny, perhaps directly on that. We have not distributed the leaflets, but in the ministerial breakfast with our minister, uh, when the minister announced uh, to his colleagues that uh, we are going to donate this one million, he made clear that uh, he would encourage the colleagues to do similar. And it's also, if you have had a chance to read it in our summary of this discussion, it's the last paragraph where we again um, stating this, um, this uh, appeal. So um, it, it has been there. Of course, no, it was not like people stood up and said, yeah, we are going to, 
to donate, but we are working on it, and uh, and and uh, and we have to be cautious, or we have to we have to see that um, it's not only money from a few regions, a few countries, and a few companies. It has to be a broad financial support in order to be also on that side, including inclusive and multi-stakeholder. Yeah, I mean, thank you, Venny. That was a good suggestion. And we had actually hoped to put these um, out there as well as in the participants' bags, and I think that just um, came, came through too late. I'm wondering if we can actually put them on the chairs for the closing session, though, on uh, Friday, or distribute them at the room or something. Um, you know, the, again, the first rule of fundraising is to ask, and if people don't know that <laughs> we need their support, um, so I don't know if there's something we can do still with the two days that are left to get. I mean, this this looks nice. I know it's not card stock, but it still looks nice and, frankly, way less in your handbags and <laughs> briefcases. Um, could I just take a moment to answer um, maybe Arnold's just, and it's not an answer, it's just kind of a speculation or crystal ball gazing or not, because we need to make sure that this discussions around the HLBDC and what happens with IGF or IGF plus don't stop people and they wait to see what happens. Um, and the IGF is mandated by the General Assembly. It has a mandate to 2025. Um, anything which might be seen as interesting by the community and or by the, the UN and this agile flexible consultation process they have in place would still need subsequent approvals um, and will not, there is no magic funding budget for them, even if they come up with the most fantastic idea for the next phase of the IGF's evolution. So I think we have to assume that the IGF continues to evolve and strengthen over the next few years, and we need to continue our, our strong efforts. I don't foresee in there, maybe Rudolph has some, uh, there's not going to be any substantive change or decision in the next six or nine months that we could say. So, and, and I said six or nine months, it's probably a few years. <laughs> so everybody should, you know, hold firm to the model we have, continue trying to do improvements and continue to bring um, additional, additional funds. And there's no reason to sort of stop and, and wait from my perspective. Anybody has? <laughs> Thank, thank you, Lee. So just to also share that perspective, um, I think what the slide Sonia uh, shared with us uh, clearly indicate that we, we have a deficit and there are also a lot more that uh, we need to do. Uh, we try to do some, by like including supporting the NRI, uh, the slide that Sonia shown. So this year we, we supported nine NRI, um, also following the, the, the past um, leading example by IGFSA. Uh, in directing, uh, indirectly contributing to the NRI, uh, including two regional NRI, the Asia, Asia Pacific and uh, Asia Pacific Regional IGF, as well as African IGF, and uh, seven other national IGF, mostly from the least developed country. So this is one part that we like to do more. In addition to the, of course, uh, strengthen um, IGF secretariats, which um, I think all of you uh, would agree that uh, that that is also one area that we need to put in more resources. Um, Anyone else would really uh, would, would like to would like to give more inputs or new advice or funds or funds? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I just also like to recall that this this morning um, Lynn also uh, moderated a very good session that we actually invite uh, both recipients and also some donors. Some of you are here with us this morning, and the, there were also some good suggestions, including that uh, perhaps we can also reach out to some other agencies, including the UN Foundation, uh, especially to reach out to the private sector. Uh, second is how we can reach, also reach out to the philanthropic organizations. And the third, I think there was uh, some discussion of how we can also get um, the MAC meetings to be back-to-back -back with other meetings, including the regional IGF, that can actually give also, not just for fundraising or for cost saving, but also to increase the profile of the MAC and, and the IGF, the regional IGF. Just to put a further point on what Wai Min is saying, we were actually approached by the right um, NCC, um, who um, also have a relationship with the Middle East Network Operators Group, MENOG. 
Um, and it was specifically perhaps about putting something alongside that group, which would be quite interesting because if the MAG could foresee a program of a few days where they could go in ahead of time um, and engage with others in the region on a specific set of topics and even have a pre-event or mini-event or something for a day or so, that would certainly bring more interest to um, the IGF, a better appreciation of what the IGF is to a community that maybe isn't so familiar with it. And um, their position was that um, they would actually look to fund the travel and the meeting support. So that would provide some relief to the DESA budget because it wouldn't come out of the, the funds on hand. It would be an additional contribution. I don't know what that means in terms of the contributory path, but, um, you know, as a, as a one-off, if you've already got a venue and you've got all the venue costs and you've already got... Um, some travel expenses to add a couple of extra days on it was minimal for them. And again, how exactly that works, but, and, and maybe the regional um, IGFs is a place to do that as well. Um, I, I don't know though, most of them, I think that would probably be quite taxing to them and their, their finance and some of the venues and hosting costs. So I think we need to think that through carefully. Yes, Nigel, please. Yes, thank you very much, Nigel Hicks and ICANN. Just to uh, you know, note uh, the excellent uh, initiative you know, from Germany to, to gather so many parliamentarians here. We had the privilege to speak to some earlier. And you know, it's often said, of course, that uh, you know, the IGF needs to attract high-level government participation and high-level business participation. And of course, this is always always true, and it was ex excellent to see uh, uh, the number of governments here uh, at the opening earlier this week. But the parliamentarians, what they made us think, I think, is, is that, of course, uh, some of the parliamentarians are in government, are in the government parties of the various countries, but some of them are not in the government parties. Uh, and they are the future governments. Some of those are the future governments. And I think, you know, we really do have the opportunity of showing them that the, uh, as, as we've done this week, or as we're doing this week, to show them that the IGF is the, is the place for this multi-stakeholder dialogue. And so I think, you know, if this initiative can continue, it's, it's just so valuable to uh, the future of the IGF. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. Um, just to pick up the earlier point um, about about what we have this, um, I'm not sure, Rudolf, whether how we can explore also to just to share this message either during the parliamentary session or the closing. Uh, but of course, we can discuss about that. Uh, just to make use of of the remaining days. And anyone else like? Oh, yes, yes, please. If you can introduce yourself, I'm sorry, I I'm not, don't know your name. <laughs> Um, hello, my name is Alk Pals. I'm um, observing this this meeting, and if I um, took a look at the um, budget, I saw that one fourth of the uh, secretary's budget is about capacity building, and most of that is within Africa. Um, and now I'm wondering why the meeting is now for four years, including next year in, in Europe, and not within that region, because. Um, we see the urge that the region needs it. Um, why shouldn't we uh, move there? Um, that's my first point. Um, also, I agree with Nigel that we should include more um, the local politics and the community. Um, and besides that, the meeting on Sunday with the youngsters um, that was also really a great meeting just to put that ahead of um, the IGF. So I really encourage that to uh, keep that intact. Um, so that was uh, where my points. Thank you. Um, thank you. If, if I can uh, just address to the point, I guess you're referring to the NI grants, the, that is the capacity development grants that we gave to support the national, regional, and youth IGF. So you are right that for this year, um, the quite a number identified are in the African region. That is because also the first is that we have this initial uh, target to help the least developed country, and of course, quite a number is the, they are in the African region. Secondly, is also to support the 
the um, IGF, the national IGF for those countries. And that happened to that they have a date that could actually uh, meet our deadlines. So we plan to do that in future years. Um, thanks to the, the German government again for, for supporting the other components like Mac Travel. Uh, we do believe that we have some funds to, to keep, uh, to identify new NRI. I guess we, from the point to take from you is that we also can look at supporting some youth IGF initiative. Um, so that will be considered um, in addition to, to think about other, other regions, not just Africa. Thank you. Yes. Oh, there's a remote participant. Yeah, uh, you have the question or is ready to? Okay, yes, please. Um, we have a question from a remote participant. Are you ready to speak? Hello? Ah, yes, we hear you now. Can you please introduce yourself? Can you hear me? Very well. Please. please. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Thank you so much for uh, the opportunity. My name is uh, Omar Ansari, and I'm uh, coordinating the uh, National IGF Afghanistan. Um, uh, it's a multi-stakeholder initiative. We started in 2017, and this year we had our uh, third very successful uh, IGF uh, Afghanistan. I also served uh, as, uh, as a MAG member for uh, three years, uh, working with Lynn and other colleagues from the IGF Secretariat and the, uh, the community as a whole. Um, it has been a great um, opportunity for us in Afghanistan to get involved with the international um, IG community. Uh, let me share with you some updates on uh, how the IGF Afghanistan evolved. In 2017, when we started, we had about 70% of the uh, IGF uh, A um, speakers who were uh, remote participants and uh, uh, speaking at the uh, event remotely. In 2018, which was the second year, uh, this dropped to 50%. And this year, we had only 25% of the uh, international community speaking at the IGF Afghanistan. Um, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the good thing is that uh, um, we were able to involve more local community uh, participating uh, speakers at the uh, IGF Afghanistan. So we consider that uh, 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 as a very good achievement in Afghanistan. People uh, are gaining the confidence to uh, come to the IGFA uh, and share their knowledge and experiences. With that, uh, we had uh, um, an increased number of women participants in the IGF uh, 2019 compared to the first year. When we started, we have been doing like uh, uh, for the third year, a kids academy where we bring uh, children uh, aged eight to uh, 14 years to, uh, to uh, share their experiences on how they, um, uh, they use the internet, the purposes and how they can uh, be safer online. Um, the common challenges we have in Afghanistan is capacity. Uh, in engagement with the international community that is in Afghanistan. Uh, we have uh, many donor communities, including uh, the uh, German uh, government uh, supported uh, uh, organizations in the Swiss government. Many European uh, countries are involved in Afghanistan. Uh, but it, it has been very hard for us to uh, get engaged with them uh, locally um, to bring them to our sessions, to uh, have them organize sessions in the IGF Afghanistan. And the second segment that has been missing was the Afghanistan parliament. But in 2020, we are planning to get uh, more involved with these communities uh, so that we can, uh, you know, continue uh, providing people with an opportunity to, uh, to involve. 
Um, the reason I wanted to speak here is that uh, IGF um, in general, the global IGF has really contributed to uh, not only by bringing uh, uh, local communities to the global IGF, but expansion of the NRIs uh, in supporting the NRIs in different countries. We were lucky to uh, get uh, in-kind support from the IGF Secretariat. And for the first time, we were able to uh, send a fellow, uh, Lema Madumi, uh, to the IGF Secretariat to work there as a fellow mm, and learn and come back to Afghanistan uh, to share those experiences. So I really thank the international community uh, for their contribution to the global IGF, the NRIs, the uh, local initiatives um, that are, uh, you know, started in different countries. We're also working on the Youth IGF Afghanistan. This will be our first year for the Youth IGF. And I really look forward to working with you and engaging with you on this initiative as well. Thank you. Omar, this is Lynn Sainamore. Um, it was very, very nice to see you up on the screen. Would have only been nice if you'd actually been here in person. And for those of you who don't know, um, the Afghanistan IGF has been very, very impressive in terms of what they've been able to do. Um, the subjects covered, the, the individuals that are there, um, some of the customs they've actually been put in place. I mean, very, um, very aggressive. And of course, the intern uh, program was very good as well. Um, so, uh, Elma, well, you just triggered one other thought in my mind, and that with these postcards we had, which were done last year with the Dutch government and um, using a platform that Sylvia Kadena had actually shared with us, which is an open source platform. And we were actually going to make it available so that the NRIs could do whatever they want with the text in their local languages. You can obviously put it up as a PDF, but they could also use it for their own distribution efforts um, in, in country as well. So I think that's something we should make known um, if it just helps. I know from my own past experiences with ISOC fundraising, I mean, anything you can do to just give a little head start to a lot of the efforts can make a tremendous difference in a, in a lot of countries. So um, if we could do that, I think that would be helpful as well. And maybe there's even some other things we could do to help the NRIs understand what would be helpful to their local fundraising um, efforts. But thank you, Omar. Thank you, thank you, Lee. Um, I guess that's just to say there's much more that we can do for NRIs and capacity developments. Um, yes, if you'd like to bring intervention. Uh, good evening. <clears throat> My name is Makan Fai. I'm the secretary of the uh, African Internet Governance Forum. Uh, I've been participating in the IGF uh, since its beginning. Uh, and uh, we benefited this year from uh, the grant from UNDESA. Uh, and I can uh, testify that it was uh, really very, very useful because uh, uh, the way the proposals were prepared, the request for proposals were prepared was really pushing the grantees to go beyond what they used to do. So we had to look for the inclusion of uh, unrepresented stakeholders. You know. So the money from the grant was used to fund, half of the money funded uh, youth and women, and uh, also elders, because usually we don't have elders in this uh, uh, for a while, uh, they have a very important role uh, to play. Uh, this uh, contributed to the holding of the first African Youth Forum. This was this year. And uh, uh, also, uh, this year's African IGF uh, witnessed 64% uh, of youth were uh, the main uh, group representative. So the other part was uh, uh, the adults. And this year also we had the first uh, meeting of elders, a caucus of elders, which uh, 
in fact uh, put out a declaration, the role of the seniors in internet governance for development, where they were really looking forward to pass, to, to coach the young, the youth, and so on, and uh, uh, make sure that the knowledge they have as, uh, is, it does not die uh, like that. Uh, we had also a very impressive uh, media coverage, definitely. All the radios, uh, the televisions, the online media were covering that event, and uh, uh, UNDESA was uh, really very visible on, in all those media. Uh, the, the, grand, the, the workshop, the, the, the Rajana IGF was uh, funded also by uh, other donors, contributors, including the Policy and Regulation Initiative for Digital Africa, which is funded by the AU and the EU, Internet Society, ICANN, IGFSA, AFRINIC, and, and AXIS. So that is uh, just, I want to just highlight the importance of the grant you received. And of, of course, it doesn't cover everything. It uh, covered uh, maybe 10% of our needs, but it is very important seed money. And the way the, uh, the, the project was crafted, it pushed you to go beyond what you used to do. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Makin, for, sh for sharing all these uh, Im impressive outcomes uh, of the IGF, African IGF, and we are glad that uh, that DESA is, is, uh, uh, can share part of, um, uh, can contribute to part of this. Um, we are running late, and we know that there's uh, music nights is happening. That's why Chengatai just just leave us, <laughs> just <laughs> left us. <laughs> I think he's doing some introduction there. Uh, but, but I'd like to ask uh, one round to see whether anyone else like to have anything to, to, to contribute. Yes, Anand. Yes, just to um, inform you, it's not an NRI session or uh, an in, another international organization session. Um, I, I had a, a quite busy schedule being abroad uh, the last uh, uh, couple of weeks. I was in Addis Ababa where we had the GFCE annual meeting, the Global Forum on Cyber Expertise. And during that meeting, uh, we had several workshops. Uh, that was also a place where I mentioned the valuable work of the IGF and uh, the, the work of the Secretariat uh, and uh, tried to see whether there can be uh, some, some, some cooperation between this organization, this platform, the global platform, and, uh, and the, uh, the IGF. Currently, we are quite busy. I'm a, part, I'm a member of that team to uh, make uh, the GFC uh, more sustainable by uh, transforming it into a, an independent foundation. Of course, the, the funding problem will rise as well, <laughs> uh, but uh, we are doing that with a firm commitment also to uh, capacity building, cyber security capacity building. Then I was uh, the week after that in India, where uh, first time where I had an, an in, I was an, uh, invited to be a speaker on the uh, India School on Internet Governance, and there I was amazed by the enthusiasm, the dynamism, dynamic uh, participation of especially uh, youth uh, uh, IGF India. Uh, I offered them uh, in-kind support, of course, for, and, and I'm happy to see that some of them are already here. Uh, there again, I. I, 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 I um, made in uh, remarks on the Dutch approach of internet governance, multi-stakeholder approach. And uh, it was an, uh, not only India, India uh, but uh, there were also a representative from Afghanistan and uh, uh, Bangladesh uh, during that meeting. It was a three-day meeting. Uh, they went on to, to, to Sunday and uh, they had really concrete cases uh, upon which they uh, were uh, copying the multi-stakeholder approach. It was quite impressive, I must say, and uh, I would like to, to share that with you. Thank you. Thank you. The, thanks, thanks, Anna, for sharing. There's, I think there's, a, there's is really a lot of uh, impressive work out there, and thanks for your personal commitment to that as well. Um, yes, with that, uh, I guess we, we overrun some time. Um, Ji Wang, would you like to have some? Oh. And uh, if, if there's anything, I was just looking at uh, across the aisle at uh, Mr. Kuma, um, whether as a veteran of IGF, he can share some insights with us how to raise funds and support IGF. If you put me on the spot, I suppose I will have to. <laughs> no, I was listening and what you said to begin with also in relationship to IGF+. Plus, all this is very good, 
but without a budget, it's essentially just wishful thinking. So uh, the message, put your money where the mouth is, I think would be a very important message. And also the fact that we have the Secretary General now attending an IGF meeting twice in a row definitely should add prestige to the event. And I think that would also help with the fundraising. I notice here the private sector is conspicuously absent. And that is where the money is. And uh, OK, it has increased a bit in percentage, but just looking around the room here, just the usual suspects. And they really, I think, uh, also through the high-level panel, that it should be possible to reach at the higher level in the corporate sector. I mean, there was the wife of a very rich man <laughs> was co-chairing the, uh, the high-level panel, and the organization in question is actually very active in the IGF. But obviously, we have not talked to the right people within the organization, and money is there. And in the private sector, the GAFA, they're swimming in money, but they give their money quite often to different initiatives. They control much more. They set up something or set up a separate NGO or, or lobbying organization. They can use them for furthering their purposes. But the message is, look, guys, if you want to have these discussions in a multi-stakeholder mode, come to the IGF. Otherwise, they go to the General Assembly. And there may be the environment will be slightly less favorable for the private sector. That's, but hopefully, with the presence of the Secretary General, and we had two, two years in a row, we had a political leader of a G7, G8 country speaking, and I thought the Chancellor's speech was absolutely remarkable. I mean, that's sort of something that can also be used as propaganda material. I mean, that was a very, very positive speech, I think. Sorry, now I've talked too long, but uh, <laughs> thank you. No, th th thank you, Marcus, for sharing that, that wisdom. It's, 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 it's true. We do have the absence of the stakeholder group. Uh, I, I think with that, thank you for staying so late, despite the small, exciting activities out there. Uh, the, but I, I just like to end off to say that this, just to say that this discussion uh, and Marcus, you say it's a user suspect, but also this user suspect is actually those have a lot of uh, really commitment, passion, and I would just like to say that I know that we have an IGF donors mailing list. Um, so I and also riding on the all the excellent work that uh, Lynn has done in leading the working group on fundraising as the MAC chair for the past few years. Uh, the is I, I think we, we it's a small group, small group here, but I would like to invite all of us to give a big applause to, to Lynn to really for leading that part of the work, given that. To Germany, <laughs> to Finland, yeah, but. to <laughs> So, so just, on, just, just on that, we will use the mailing list to continue to, to tap on your, your wisdom, your, your feedback, and we'll see how we can really uh, do more in, in getting funds for the IGF. Um, so thank you very much, and I think we can all get to Enjoy the music night. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you again. Thank you. Desiree, the next meeting.